All right, this lesson focuses on finding the roots of a polynomial function using the remainder theorem and synthetic division. So here are the steps that you would go through to find the zeros of the roots. Number one, list out the possible rational zeros using the rational root theorem. Number two, use a graphing calculator to find the possible x-intercepts. Then pick one of those and use synthetic division. If you get a remainder of zero, then that is a zero of the function. Step three, factor if possible out the rest of the polynomial and then solve for x using the zero product property. All right, this example, you can just follow along. You do not need to take notes because I will do another one um, with you in more detail. So here is our polynomial function. It's a quartic function, so it could have up to four possible roots. So step one, use the rational root theorem. So if you remember, you take the coefficient, or the constant, eight, and you take all the factors of plus or minus eight, and then the leading coefficient is one, it's a factor one. And here are the possible roots. There are eight of them. Step two, we're gonna use the graphing calculator. In a later video, I will show you how to enter this into the graphing calculator. So here's what the um, shape looks like, kind of bounces up like that. Um, there is a x-intercept about there and here. So on the graphing calculator, we'll show you how to find those numbers. So there's an x-intercept at negative two and another one at one. So those are gonna be our starting points. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start the test. So we're gonna test using synthetic division, um, x equaling one. As a factor, that's x minus one. As an x-intercept, it's one comma zero. So let's go th pretend like we've gone through and did synthetic division, and notice you get a remainder of zero. So you've now shown that this is a factor. Now, We've taken out x minus 1. We want to figure out what's left over here in our function. So we're going to go ahead and drop a degree. This is now my x cubed term, my x squared term, my x, and my constant. So these numbers, those coefficients. So they're going to go right into here. Now we're left with a uh, cubic function to continue factoring. Well, remember, on our previous slide, we had an x-intercept we thought at x equals negative 2. As a factor, it's x plus 2. And as an ordered pair, it's negative 2, 0. So we're going to go through synthetic division with our leftovers, these numbers right here. And notice, when we go through synthetic division, we get a remainder of 0. So we've just shown that that is also a factor. So now we have taken out the first x minus 1, we took out an x plus 2, and now what we're left with, we drop a degree, an x squared, an x, and constant. So here's how you write that, x squared plus 4. All right, going on to the last step here. We need to find out, with that last factor, what are those two remaining roots? So we're going to solve by undoing. We're going to subtract 4 and then square root it. And we get plus or minus 2i. These are called complex roots. Complex roots will not be x-intercepts. Imaginary roots do not become x-intercepts. So we did have an x-intercept at x equals 1. We had another x-intercept on the graph at x equals negative 2. And then these were my imaginary roots in factored form. So not all roots will be x-intercepts. So the solution is these four roots. We have two imaginary and two real roots. <clears throat>